We're going to do this question, Raghu's favorite question. We're going to do it by Raghu's method. Super, let's start. In a class of 100 students, 73 like coffee, 80 like tea, and 52 like lemonade. Nice, 100 students. 73, 80, 52. Nice. It may be possible that some students do not like any of these three drinks. Understandable. Then the difference between the maximum and minimum possible number of students who like all the three drinks is nice. Max difference between maximum and minimum number of students who like all three. Okay. A very algebraic way of doing this. And so, uh, we, Raghu has come up with a nice visual way of doing this. I'm going to have a, have a crack at the visual way. Okay. The maximum part is simpler. Minimum is trickier. What is the maximum? Let's start by saying, hey, nice, 100 people in this. And think of this as student number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, till 100. Okay. 73 like coffee, 80 like tea, and 52 like lemonade. What am I going to do? I'm going to number these people who like coffee, tea, or lemonade and put them on this. And then start from there. And so I'm going to start with tea. This 80 of them, largest number. So it helps us grab a, grab a big chunk. Let's say the 80 people who like tea. I put them on a stack like this. Nice. And imagine we want to find the maximum number of people who like all three. Student number 1 through 80 like tea. Then, now I go to next step and I say coffee lovers. If I put a bunch of people coffee lovers here, then that 20 or that 5 or that 7, whatever coffee lovers I put beyond this, they definitely do not like tea. So, this list of 20 cannot be among the people who like all three. I want to find the maximum who like all three. From step one, I want to find the maximum who like all three. So, I say, nice. I'm going to take this coffee lovers and put them right on top like this. So, the set of tea lovers, within that I have a set of coffee lovers. Anybody who likes coffee likes tea also. That way, I have maximized overlap between coffee and tea. Done. Brilliant. Now I introduce lemonade. 52 people like lemonade. Very interesting. Wonderful. Where will I put them? If I put them here, student number 81 to 100, then that group likes lemonade only. If I put them here, 74 to 80, that group likes lemonade and tea, but not uh, coffee. Then I say, I want to have the maximum people who eat, drink both. Right now, this 73 drink coffee and tea and I think about this 73 and then I say I want the maximum number of tea drink uh, lemonade drinkers to be sitting in this 73 so what do we do nice interesting stick this in here so 80 people drink tea within that some 73 drink coffee within that some 52 drink lemonade or this 52 drink lemonade coffee and tea brilliant in other words, we are looking for our typical Venn diagram, our classic Venn diagram for finding the maximum, like this. Lemonade, coffee, tea. This is tea, this is coffee, this is lemonade. The people who don't drink any of the three, but everybody who drinks lemonade drinks coffee, everybody who drinks coffee drinks tea. That way, any lemonade drinker is a coffee drinker and a tea drinker, 52 people, that's the maximum. I straight away intuitively know that my answer for maximum cannot be more than 52. 53 people cannot drink all three. Only 52 drink lemonade. The maximum possible is 52. I've achieved a diagram for 52. I'm very happy. So this is the diagram. Visually, differently is what's happening here. Nice. The minimum part is a trickier one. Right. I'm going to follow the same approach and say, hey, nice. Think about tea, coffee and lemonade. Why starting with tea, 80 people. Easy to grab. Put all 80 here. Nice. Now I say, I want to have the minimum number of people who have all three drinks. So, now I'm very interested in this 81 to 100. The first 80 drink tea. 81 to 100, these people don't drink tea. So, if I can accommodate a large number of coffee drinkers here or lemonade drinkers here or coffee and lemonade drinkers here, I am very happy because this 20 cannot have tea or not having tea. That means they are automatically eliminated from having all three. 
so i want to maximize that so i said i take this coffee drinker next number 73 and put some 20 here i put this 20 here the moment i put 20 there i have 53 remaining i'll say okay nice 53 are remaining i'm going to put them here this is coffee equal to 53 now there are 53 students who drink coffee and tea some remaining 27 students who drink only tea among these two and 20 students who drink only coffee we've not brought lemonade into the picture yet right now this is coffee done completely now i bring in lemonade right and i say if i this these buggers this 27 numbers here drink only tea among tea and coffee this 20 drink only coffee so this entire stretch if i put lemonade drinkers there i can be confident that those guys don't drink three drinks either tea and lemonade or coffee and lemonade not both so i say very interesting so I'm, i want the minimum possible for all three i'm going to say take all the lemonade drinkers and put them here except there's 27 here plus 20 here I have up to 47 totally who can drink the, the 47 students totally who drink lemonade some of them drink tea also some of them drink coffee also nobody drinks coffee and tea so this entire 47 is a gang that is drinking two out of the three drinks maximum or all 47 is two out of the three lemonade and tea lemonade and coffee nice but I have 52 people who like lemonade. 47 have been accounted for. I have 5 more. They have to come here. Or if I do the whole diagram here, 47 will go here. And then there will be 5 remaining. That is this 5. These 5 people drink tea, coffee and lemonade. You simply cannot have a scenario where this is 0. That's not possible. If you think about it another way, 80 plus 73 plus 52 which is 5 205 100 plus 100 200 5 more remaining that 5 has to come as an overlap here that's what comes if the total adds up beyond 200 then i have to have a few people or at least one person who has had all three but this is the best way if you want to minimize this all three being there as low as possible this is the best way make sure that there are tea drinkers and then coffee drinkers with no overlap with tea stuck in the corner then lemonade drinkers with no overlap with tea and coffee as much as possible only tea only coffee done exhausted still some five burgers are remaining they'll go here so the minimum is five maximum we already figured out is 52. Okay. so this is such an interesting framework or to a variant of this what, is, what if the question asked you the maximum number of people who drank exactly one drink exactly one drink only tea or only coffee or only lemonade only tea only coffee or only lemonade right? so, same idea put 80 students to drink tea nice and i want a maximum that have drunk exactly one drink and what do i say so let me accommodate coffee this side this way so far this 27 plus this 20 this 47 people have drunk only tea or only coffee and only tea or only coffee already sitting here okay. this is a 47 people now i still have to accommodate lemonade mind you I have to bring in lemonade somewhere into the system if i put lemonade here then the entire lemonade drinking gang in this stretch with me lemonade and tea or lemonade and coffee two i don't want that happening therefore i take lemonade and put it here so this only tea this is only coffee and all lemonade drinkers come into coffee and tea beautiful diagram that maximizes only tea and only coffee we cannot do better than this or we'll have a total of 47 the number of people maximum number of people 
who drank exactly one drink is 47. So we take tea and coffee, stack it separately, and then we look at lemonade and then say, look, I don't want to spread out lemonade. I want to take lemonade. If I spread out lemonade here, then my maximum number of lemonade drinkers will be lemonade and tea, lemonade and coffee. And then I'll put five here, it'll be lemonade, tea and coffee. I don't want that. I'll stack lemonade right on top. That way I'm safeguarding this 47 to be the guys who have had only one drink. Only tea or only coffee. Brilliant. Put this here, we are through. So the maximum number of people who drank exactly one drink is 47 people who drank either only tea or only coffee. Lovely. Hush.